Basic Concept of Typography What is typography and basic rules and terms of graphics? Choosing a font Basic Concepts The Glossary What is typography and basic rules and terms of graphics? Typography is, quite simply, the art and technique of arranging type. It's central to the work and skills of a designer and is about much more than making the words legible. Choice of typeface and how make it work with layout, grid, color scheme, design theme and so on will make the difference between a good, bad and great design. Good typography is partly down to creative intuition, but it's impossible to become skilled in typography without understanding the basic rules of the craft, even if mean to break them. In this article, we introduce the fundamental concepts of typography, followed by a detailed glossary of its main terms. Choosing a font There is an astonishing array of professional fonts to choose from, but with great power comes great responsibility. Just choose from a vast library doesn't mean to. There is something to be said for painting with a limited palette and tried and tested fonts like Helvetica continue to serve us well. Despite sites such as providing links to the best free fonts available, but that doesn't mean it's not worth investing in paid ones. A typeface, like any form of design, is created by craftsmen over a substantial period of time using the talent and experience they've been honing for many years. And the benefits of a professionally designed font, various weights and styles to form a complete family, carefully considered kerning pairs, multi-language support with international characters, expressive alternate glyphs to add character and variety to typesetting are not always found in a font available for free. Basic Concepts Here are some of the most important typographic considerations the professional designers need to take into account. One, size. All typefaces are not created equally. Some are fat and wide, some are thin and narrow, so words set in different typefaces can take up a very different amount of space on the page. The height of each character is known as its X height, quite simply because it's based on the letter X. When pairing typefaces, such as when using a different face to denote an area of attention, it's generally wise to use those that share a similar X height. The width of each character is known as the set width, which spans the body of the letter plus a space that acts as a buffer with the other letter. Two, leading. Leading describes the vertical space between each line of type. It's called this because strips of lead 
were originally used to separate lines of type in the days of metal type setting. For legible body text that's comfortable to read, a general rule is that your leading value should be greater than your font size, anywhere from 1.25 to 1.5 times. Three, tracking and kerning. Kerning describes the act of adjusting the space between characters to create a harmonious pairing. For example, where an uppercase A meets an uppercase V, their diagonal strokes are usually kerned so that the top left of the V sits above the bottom right of the A. Four, measure. The term measure describes the width of a text block. Seeking to achieve the optimum reading experience, it's clearly an important consideration. Five, hierarchy and scale. If all type was the same size, then it would be difficult to know which the most important information on the page was. In order to guide the reader, then headings are usually large, subheadings are smaller, and body type is smaller still.